the fact that I can just go through and just not even care because like hey everyone it's ben hardy here and in today's going to be reviewing a full production ford bronco raptor first and foremost though a huge shout out and thank you to the national gmc here in american fork utah for giving me some time with this bronco raptor this one is available for sale for the time being so if you're interested i'll include a link to their inventory in the description down below just ask for david if you have any questions and then as always if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car link to my car buying guide in the description down below let's get into it So under the hood, we have a twin turbo three liter V6 that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 418 horsepower and then about 442 pound feet of torque with fuel economy, real world fuel economy, by the way, being about 16 miles per gallon combined. That's what I was able to get when I had one of these for a few days and drove it around in Colorado. Let's go over the front end of the Bronco Raptor. So first off, as you guys can see, we've got the vent piece here in the center of the hood, which looks absolutely epic. Raptor logo there off to the side. And then notice that the mirrors are actually fixed to the body, just like the regular Bronco. So you can take the doors off and still have mirrors. And you guys can see the marker light there at the end of the mirrors. And then notice we got the orange daytime lights here around the headlights, LED lights, by the way. And then we got the orange marker lights here in the center. Camera just down below that center marker light. And then you guys can see here, we've got this heavy duty off-road bumper with some chunky tow hooks there. We also have the Raptor fog lights built in. And then we got our bash plate and then we do have skid plate protection underneath. And just like the F-150 Raptor, everything has been beefed up from a suspension and shock perspective. This does have the live valve series uh, shocks and we'll kind of talk about those a little bit more during the driving portion. But last but not least, we have about 13.1 inches of ground clearance with the Raptor package. Now something to mention with the Bronco Raptor compared to the F-150 Raptor, because this is a shorter wheelbase and because of how they've sculpted the bumpers and the overall body, this has a significantly better approach, departure and breakover angle compared to the F-150 Raptor, which makes this better off road. Now coming around the side here, we've got 17 inch wheels and wrapped around that we have 37s in the front and in the rear. If you guys want the specifics, 37 by 12 and a half by 17. Now this has the beadlock capable wheels you can get with the Bronco Raptor. And yeah, you guys can see pretty aggressive tires. Now you saw earlier with the Fox shocks from like the front angle, but here's another look at the suspension. Independent front suspension with the Bronco Raptor, solid rear axle with the Bronco Raptor, just like the F-150 Raptor and like the regular Bronco, frankly. We have 13 inches of travel in the front, 14 inches of travel in the rear, and there's our side view. And without the graphics, this thing looks so clean. Like don't get the graphics package. That's all I got to say. This thing looks so much better without it. And then you guys can see here with the venting on the side and then obviously the gigantic fender flares, which National GMC actually might be doing a paint match on this. I'm not exactly sure at this point, uh, but I think that would look pretty cool if these were paint matched to match the uh, black exterior color. And then we've got the little removable piece here on this rear fender flare because, well, apparently it's gonna take a lot of damage if you take this off-road. We got the side steps that also have a rock rail on them so you can remove the steps pretty easy and just have the rock rail, which is the first thing I'd do if I were to buy a Bronco Raptor. And then here's a look at the shocks in the rear. And these things are seriously heavy duty. Like the amount that these shocks can take is just crazy. Yeah, look at that whole setup right there. Now here's the key fob for the Bronco Raptor. You guys can see the Raptor logo there on the back. We have our unlock lock function and remote start as well. And we're actually going to pop into the rear. So this has like the double compression just like the regular bronco and then you got the window that you can lift up and storage space back here is actually pretty solid i mean it's you know a pretty big suv and notice we got the roll cage here and they have beefed up everything as part of the bronco raptor package so this can sustain jumps and heavy duty off-roading we do have a 12 volt there in the rear as well and then when you're all done just lower down the window and it's pretty easy to close. I mean, that's the 37 on it and it's not super crazy. Now here are the tail lights. So these are specific to the Bronco Raptor. Um, I wouldn't say they look better than the regular Bronco tail lights. I think they just look different. And then we've got the marker lights here in the center, just above the tire carrier. And yep, it has been reinforced to be able to hold a spare 37 here on the back. And you know what's crazy is this is so big with like the beefed up fender flares and everything, that, that spare 37 does not look like, it, it looks normal on the back. It doesn't look like huge, which is crazy. 
Now here's the door panel in the rear of the Bronco Wrap. You guys can see the padding here at the top and then down below. And then look at the orange right there. And then here are these seats. I always find it funny, every single Bronco that I review always has this headrest down. And actually, funny story, when I took delivery of my original Bronco, the headrest in this area was actually broken. But anyways, you guys can see we've got like Alcantara in the seats, and then in the center portion we got like the inserts, but then the outside is like the leather trim, and then this does have the code orange seat belts. Now getting in is pretty interesting, so the side step does help out, you got the grab handle, but you do want to duck a little bit because this is kind of low, just so you guys don't hit your head. Anyways, legroom. Headroom, and then you guys can see a little storage pocket there. We do have some window controls here in the center. And then we got the outlets, Bronco logo, and we have the cup holder armrest that's like in the shape of Utah, which is so funny. I mean, it's kind of, you know, a little bit too long, but you know, it works. And then we do have the top insulation, as you guys can see. Let's head to the front. Now here is the door panel on the front. You guys can see the padding, just like what you have in the rear, and then more of that code orange, and then. Marker light there again on the mirrors. Blind spot running in the mirrors, and it always freaks me out opening a door in a Bronco because I always feel like the door's gonna slam into the mirror. Ford Performance, and we gotta talk about weight. This is something that I've been emphasizing for a long time with the Bronco Raptor. Okay, payload capacity, 1,082 pounds. And then you guys can see here, gross vehicle weight rating, 6850. So you subtract the 1,082 from the 6850, and you get about 5,800 pounds, or a little bit less than 5,800 pounds, which means this weighs pretty much the same amount as an F-150 Raptor. It's, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big vehicle. And then here are the pedals, and then you guys can see with the hood latch release, parking brake, light controls, and then notice, again, Bronco with the carbon fiber. Let's pop in. So here is the steering wheel for the Bronco Raptor. You guys can see the leather trim all around. We got the marker there at the top with again more of the code orange stitching and then the carbon fiber trim all around. Giant paddles here on the back of the steering wheel for that 10-speed automatic. And this does have practical stuff like adaptive cruise control, steering assistance, and then you got like your voice command controls for the center stack, all that. This is to adjust the suspension. That is for the exhaust. This is your custom R mode and then that is to adjust the steering. And there's the steering wheel. So here is the center gauge cluster. It's a full digital gauge cluster, just like the F-150 Raptor. So it is a little bit different than the regular Bronco from a gauge cluster perspective. Um, but I mean, overall, pretty straightforward uh, with the use. Typically, you know, with my Raptor, I just have it on my view. And I guess that this one is showing us what mode we're in and everything. But with the exhaust, we've got a bunch of different modes. We have a normal sport, Baja, and then a quiet mode that you can go through suspension. If it'll load up, we got a sport off-road and then normal that you can go through. And then again, your R mode is like your setting, right? And you guys can see this is just on the default setting right now. And then steering normal, comfort, and then sport that you can go between with that. But we've got more modes. We've got our go over any terrain. So we have our normal sport tow haul, slippery. And then you've got your off-road mode, your Baja mode, and then your rock crawl mode. Pro tip as being a Raptor, Raptor owner, Basically, if you're off-road, just put it in Baja mode <laughs> and do the lockers yourself if you need them. And then on-road, normal mode, unless you're doing sporty driving and then throw it in sport mode. Pretty straightforward. We've got our stabilizer bar disconnect. We have the front and rear lockers, trail turn assist, stability control, and that's for the hazard lights. And if you want to see me use some of this equipment, go watch my off-road review with the Bronco Raptor that I had in Colorado. And we actually have some nice stitching here on the dash. It's actually uh, pretty, pretty luxurious. Anyways, here's our infotainment screen. So... Popping into reverse, we've got a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel, and we've got a bunch of different camera views, full 360 camera system. And because the screen's massive, I mean, you can literally see everything. And if I actually press the camera button, you can see we can go through different viewpoints, which is great. And uh, if you have it in like the off-road setting, like let's just let's just throw it in Baja so you guys can see. So this is what I was talking about. So in Baja mode, you guys can see with the camera, it's got the trajectory lines with the tire markers. And by the way, this stays on the whole time. Like it doesn't matter how fast you're going, it stays on, which is pretty dang sweet. And we've got analog controls here for the radio. And then you guys can see like the camera, auto stop start, and then our climate controls. Still just have uh, heated seats and heated steering wheel. Do have dual zone climate, but yeah, no air conditioned seats here in the Bronco Raptor. And then you guys can see the wireless phone charging pad. And then notice the shifter for that 10 speed automatic. And then we got our manual mode. And then again, our go over any terrain select here. And then notice we got like our off-road cruise control. And then with our driveline select, this has everything. You got two wheel high, you got four wheel high, four wheel low, four wheel auto. I mean, anything you could ever want. And then window controls here in the center, mirror adjustments. And then Raptor here on the center console. Decent storage space. I love how it says Bronco across with coat and coat orange. 
and you guys can see the whole glove box setup. And we have six auxiliary switches, just like the F-150 Raptor. So you can add a lot of auxiliary items to the Bronco Raptor. And then uh, just like regular Bronco, you can take this off easily with just the latches, the rear, you do have to use tools for it. And you guys can see more of that reinforcement. This thing's beefed up. Now the big thing before we drive it is pricing. So the Bronco Raptor originally started at about $70,000 with the base price, fully loaded, just over $80,000. But because we live in a market where everyone likes to flip specialty vehicles, especially specialty Ford vehicles, the market value on these right now, I've seen them on the low side, like 110 to 120. I've seen some over $140,000. So I guess we'll see if it drives like $140,000. Yeah. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. It's so cool to see the venting and everything. Both of the mirrors just do a blind spot monitoring and then throughout the rest of the rear. So I'm gonna mention is use the mirrors as your like width marker, don't use the hood. Pro tip, let's set off. Okay, so setting off here in the Bronco Raptor. And by the way, the best daily driver mode with the Bronco Raptor, Baja with the exhaust, and then Sport actually with the shocks. And then with the steering sport as well. That's just my preferred mode. Now, the reason that I put the shocks in sport is because, again, just like the F 150 Raptor, this is a really heavy vehicle. And so, any sort of help you can get with the handling is definitely welcome. Now, I will say this doesn't sound as good as the F 150 Raptor with the exhaust. It's, it's still like, it's good for a V6, but it's just, again, it's, it's not F 150 Raptor trombone exhaust sounds. But again, it's, it's, it sounds pretty good. Now, the one thing I love about the Bronco Raptor is just how well insulated this is from a suspension standpoint and from a noise standpoint. So if I actually just pop it into, let's say uh, off-road with the shocks, I mean, it, like, it's not quite as smooth as the F-150 Raptor, but it's still really, really comfortable from a ride quality perspective, uh, given what it is. And the thing that I love about this is like, okay, this isn't like a huge dip, but like the fact that I can just go through and just not even care <laughs> because like, again, we have 13 inches of travel in the front, 14 in the rear. And those live valve Fox shocks are so good. They read the road, they're constantly adjusting. And it's just like crazy. Like the, the things that these shocks can do make it so that like anything that you're gonna encounter on road, like this thing can just like handle. And that's one of the things about the Bronco Raptor that uh, I feel like is kind of, a downside about the on-road driving is it's so capable that you can't really have fun with this unless you take it off-road which I, I'm okay with that like but I, I guess the one thing I will say is I, I don't think a lot of people are gonna be taking these off-road right especially considering the prices right like you know what seventy eighty thousand dollars that's still a lot of money to take something off-road but when these are going for you know when market value is 130 140 thousand plus dollars that's a really hard pill to swallow in terms of taking a vehicle off-road i love the maneuverability and by the way i can show you guys the trail turn assist here so look i'll turn it on oh, i gotta be in four wheel high so we'll pop it in four wheel high so basically it'll drag the tire don't recommend doing this on road but you can see it kind of drags the tire so it pulls us around it's it, it, it's it's a cool system it, it uses the brakes and everything we're gonna turn that off now um it uses the brakes and everything basically and i love how quick this is with the shifting so like i can just press the buttons and boom i'm back in two wheel drive like that fast like that's crazy um but yeah it, that's the thing is like a lot of this a lot of the tech with this a lot of the fun with this again it, it doesn't really apply unless you take this off road and I, I mentioned this in my series when i had this for a week so fun um this is a great like off-roader but it's not as good on-road as the f-150 raptor the f-150 raptor sounds better it's more comfortable i like the on-road driving dynamics with that overall like just more compared to this um, but again this like i said this shines with the off-roading and so the best way to look at the bronco raptor is it really is 
a Raptor, right? It, it weighs as much as the F-150. It handles very similar to the F-150. Obviously the shorter wheelbase makes it so that you don't have as much stability with this. So you guys got to kind of understand like, hey, take it easy with it. But it's, it's a blast to drive. Um, it just, it does feel like it's slightly held back though on road. It's kind of, um, I, I drove a 911 GT3 RS uh, about a month ago and I kind of felt the same thing in that that I feel in this. Like the car was really fun to drive, but I also felt like I was kind of bored in a sense because it's like, I know the car can do so much more than what I was putting it through. And I feel like the same way in this, and maybe some people liked it. Maybe some people liked that They know that they could do crazy stuff with this and they're not doing that. But like for me, I don't know it it just like like just doing this seems so boring in this like I the only way that this thing is like super fun is like wide open desert just going crazy Baja stuff rock crawling all that kind of stuff so overall the new Bronco Raptor is amazingly engine well engineered it is a really good Raptor it's a really good Raptor um, I wouldn't say it's the best Bronco I still think that the Badlands um, with the Sasquatch package is probably the Bronco sweet spot because it's really capable off-road, narrow body, so it's still, it's lightweight, still drives like a Bronco. This drives more like a pickup truck than a Bronco. Um, so I do think that that's the sweet spot for the Bronco. Um, but if you happen to live in a place like Utah here where we've got wide open desert, this thing really works. And I guess the enthusiast in me is a little bit um, sad because, well, I can't get one of these. I mean, <laughs> right? Like, I, I technically could if I wanted to shell out, you know, you know what these are going for, $130,000, $140,000. But, like, you can't just walk into a Ford store and buy one of these for the MSRP, which is just it's the market that we're in. Um, but I guess if, if you have the money, this is, a, in, this is the craziest off-roader on the planet. Like, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, um, the regular F-150 Raptor, like, anything that you can, like, bring up that's an off-roader does not compare to this. Like, this is the king of off-roading so if you want to be a person that owns a king of off-roading then yeah that's what the bronco raptor is that's because something's up with our video on this bronco raptor again a huge shout out thank you to the national gmc here in american fork utah for giving me some time with this bronco raptor check out the inventory in the description down below ask for david if you have any questions i'll see you